What's up guys? Today I'm gonna hit you with um, another video, this time about the genetics of Iranian Neolithic farmers and about a theory that I have. Now, as you can see, I'm chilling in the bathtub and uh, the best video ideas come to me while I'm in the bathtub, so I decided I'm just gonna record it right here and maybe edit it a little bit later on my computer. So basically with all the ancient and modern DNA we see this one recurring pattern. And the pattern is that there can be two groups of people who are identical genetically, however are very very different culturally. For example, like if we compare the populations of uh, white people in rural areas of Kentucky like hillbillies versus white people in Boston or white people in New York. The same exact origins, the same exact genetics, but culture, culture is very different here. And we see this with some ancient groups too. For example, we see it with Anatolian farmers and Anatolian uh, hunter-gatherers, right? Anatolian farmers pretty much are the same genetically, maybe slightly different, some additional Middle Eastern admixture, but they're very similar, very, very similar. They resemble the Anatolian hunter-gatherers who preceded them. So basically, uh, people pretty much switched from hunting and gathering to farming, and that's it. Culture changed a lot. The culture change is significant here, but the genetics change, maybe not so much. So what is the deal with Iranian Neolithic farmers and Caucasus hunter-gatherers? They're obviously very similar genetically, however, culturally, they could not be any more different. Uh, Iranian Neolithic farmers had canalizations, advanced infrastructure, they were very advanced, very civilized people, whereas the hunter-gatherers in the Caucasus, well, hunter-gatherers. But we have to keep in mind that culture actually changes a lot quicker and a lot easier than genetics do. For example, only 200 years ago my people, which I'm Russian, my people were sitting in our wooden izbas, on our pechkas, warming ourselves up with drava because we didn't have electricity. This is what my people were doing 200 years ago and they weren't any different genetically, they looked like me, they were the same as me. I'm sure there were people 200 years ago in Russia who had the same exact genetic structure as I do for the most part. And that's what they were living. The culture was completely, completely different from how it is today. So really, what am I getting at here? I think there was a population that was ancestral to both Caucasus hunter-gatherers and Iranian Neolithic farmers. And that population may have something to do with Iranian Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, such as the hot tub. Now, uh, with G25, we can see that Iranian Neolithic farmers are very similar to this hot tub individual, hot tub Mesolithic Iranian hunter-gatherer, and in fact, they're pretty much just him with some drift, without even any foreign admixture, just Iranian hunter-gatherer, plus some more modern genetic drift, which is kind of, you know, interesting that Iranian Neolithic farmers are pretty much just Iranian hunter-gatherers that switched culturally. So this aspect of the difference between Iranian Neolithic farmers and Caucasus hunter-gatherers, we have established why that is, there was a culture change, a very sudden culture change in Iran. But what's super duper interesting about both the Caucasus and the hot tub individual from Iran, Iranian hunter-gatherer, is that they both have pretty much similar ratios of ancient North Eurasian, Zuzuana and ancestral South Eurasian admixtures. Now sure, you could say that this happened just because there was this big migration of Paleolithic Ice Age Siberians into the Caucasus and Iran, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there was a small group of people, a very small group of people who lived in the Caucasus or Western Iran, who were ancestral to both the Hatub and the Caucasus hunter-gatherers in Georgia. And pretty much the final nail in the coffin for what I'm saying here is that when you model this Hatub individual as a mixture of Caucasus hunter-gatherer and other Paleolithic groups, if he was not related, if he did not come from the same origin as the Caucasus hunter-gatherer individual, he would not score majority Caucasus hunter-gatherer in this admixture. He would score mostly other stuff. He would score the other things. He would score ancient North Eurasian. He would score mostly that plus uh, Dudzuana plus other components that were ancestral to him. No, no. He's scoring mostly Caucasus hunter-gatherer. That means there was an ancestral group that was ancestral to both the Caucasus hunter-gatherer and the Hatub individual from Iran. So to sum up everything that I've said here in this video, the Iranian Neolithic farmers pretty much just descend from Iranian hunter-gatherers who were related, closely related to the Caucasus hunter-gatherers, and in fact I think they share the lineage with the Caucasus hunter-gatherers, and in fact I think the Caucasus hunter-gatherers might just be Iranian hunter-gatherers with a lot of genetic drift, because hunter-gatherer populations tend to have a lot of genetic drift, there's a lot of bottlenecks, 
Now, the reason I believe that genetic drift was a much, much bigger factor for the Caucasus hunter-gatherer population is because genetic drift tends to affect mostly small communities, small groups of people, right? When there's a small group of people reproducing, some genes, some genetic variations just completely disappear, and that's why you have this crazy genetic drift. And actually, one good example of crazy genetic drift is um, Ashkenazi Jews. For example, Ashkenazi Jews have become so distinct from other group populations in only, in only what, 2,000 years? That at this point, you can accurately tell them apart from other peoples of the Middle East and even a mixture of Middle East and Italians, which is essentially what they are. You can tell them apart from a mixture of Middle Eastern and Italian because of the genetic drift. Now, history has shown that unlike hunter-gatherer communities, farmer communities tend to sustain a much larger population, which means there is much less genetic drift, which is why I believe that it is the Caucasus hunter-gatherers who di diverged from this shared ancestor with Iranian Neolithic farmers and not the other way around. Now, uh, if you like this video, I do suggest you check out the other stuff on my channel too and leave a like, subscribe, goodbye.